Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 75th episode of Don't Forget the Popcorn. Today, I'm going to give you guys a little more off-the-cuff video today. I'm going to do a quick little Dune 2 review for you. Um, well, everyone is talking about it. They're saying it's one of the best sci-fi films of the decade, of the last 20 years. It's a perfect film. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff coming from it. Well, I'm here to say that Dune 2 is a pretty good film. Actually, it's a very good film. I enjoyed this film. Dune 1, the first Dune, Denis Villeneuve. It's a slow-burning, beautiful world-building that I actually enjoyed a lot, a lot more than I thought I was. Um, but I was intrigued after Blade Runner 29 because I thought that film was a masterpiece, and I still think that's Denis's best film. But Dune 2... What a way to follow up this movie. It picks up right where we left off. And we see our hero, Paul Atreides, getting his feet on the ground, or in the sand more so, and really taking off and getting in with the Fremen people. Um, first things first, I'm not going to spoil anything in this movie because you know it's it hasn't even been out a full week yet, so I know everyone hasn't seen it. But I am here to say... Uh, if you do plan to see this movie, I'm going to suggest seeing it in IMAX. Uh, it, it is beautiful. The big screen, this is one of the most visually impressive films I have seen in a good while. I thought this movie's look was so crisp and beautiful. It was one of the prettiest films to look at. The shots of the desert, you know, the shots of the sun and the dunes and oh. It's just a beautiful looking film. The cinematographer for this gets an A plus. Um, the sound in this movie, man, like the way your seat rattles while you're in the theater. Oh, the score, all the tech things in this movie. I don't think I have any criticisms at all. I don't think I can criticize one thing visually about this film or about the way the use of sound, use of score. Um, is this a perfect movie? Absolutely not, though. Um, I did like this film a lot, and I cannot wait to watch it a million more times. But I will say, there's a lot of stuff I didn't like about it. Um, I guess I'll start with that. Uh, one thing I didn't like is, so we get the advancement of uh, Shani and uh, Paul's relationship. And the way the film is edited... Their relationship feels weird to me, and it doesn't feel believable. Although their acting is great. Like, their acting is A1. It's just the way they pace the relationship, it didn't make me feel that invested in them as a couple. And I felt like a lot of this does lie on that. And I just didn't get that feeling. It didn't make me feel like they were really legit. Like, when certain things happen in the film, especially towards the end, I didn't feel what I felt I should have felt. So I think the editing there was a little bit weak. But that's not to say that the actors aren't giving it their all, because they are. Um, another thing about this film is I didn't read the books. And so, and this isn't really a criticism. It's just me being what wanting what I want the way I want it and me being selfish. This isn't really a criticism. But the way the film ends, it is absolutely setting up the next film and because i believe i believe denis is going to cover the first three dune books i believe that but don't quote me on that but it's covering the first three uh but it's covering the first obviously the first film is the first book the second film is the second book but the third book is it, it's got a star warsy feel where you know it's gonna feel like a trilogy but i'm just very upset that i'm probably gonna have to wait like seven years to possibly get the third installment of this film. I'm like, man, I'm going to have to wait so long. And in a world where blockbuster films like this, we get them pretty much every two or three years. So it's like, I know I'm going to have to wait a while because I know Denise said that he wants to do something else before he does another Dune. And I fully get that, man. Like doing the same thing over and over can be draining. So I understand why he would want to do something else. So I, I'm not knocking him at all. Denise, you've given us a gem, a couple gems. Do your thing. Do what you want. But I'm just upset that that's going on. Um, but 
outside of those two things, uh, I really can't say I have a ton of criticisms. Um, anything else would really just be nitpicky, which I don't need to get into all that here. This is just an off the cuff review. But there was a lot of things to like. I already talked about the visual effects, but I think every single actor bought into this a thousand percent. Um, obviously, our existing characters were all great. Um, Rebecca Ferguson, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya stepping into a much bigger role. I was very impressed with her. Um, Javier Bardem stepping into a bigger role. One of my favorite characters in the film giving us some great comic relief that the film I think definitely needed um, because it is a quite, you know, it, it's, it's got a tone to it. And I think Javier Bardem's character lightened it up just enough. Um, you know, all of our guys who were already playing, they came to play again, but our new guys, uh, we got some new players in Florence Pugh, Christopher Walken, uh, their, their additions to this film. And, they're fine, you know, but their characters, um, I guess I do have another criticism, another criticism, Florence Pugh's character and Christopher Walken's character, although yes, they're setting them up for bigger roles in the next one. They're so underused in this movie, especially Christopher Walken. I I'm not sure what made Denis want him for this film just because he didn't use any Christopher Walken traits in this character, which I think would have made this character a lot more fun and likable. You got Christopher Walken uses comedic side, you know, uses his dark side. Christopher Walken was just playing the most mundane character. I think I've ever seen him play. And Florence Pugh, same thing. You know, she, she's an actress who needs stuff to do because she can do it. And I just wish Denise would have gave her a little more, a little more to chew on in this, but there is a lot of characters. And so I get it, but there is a lot of moments where a lot of characters, you see them and then you don't see them for a while. So, but the main guy I want to talk about new guy, of course, the homie Austin Butler, Austin Butler comes in playing the villain role in this playing the heavy. And I gotta say, I've always actually liked this actor. Um, I thought he did a great job in Elvis. I know a lot of people criticize that movie. The movie is whatever, but Austin Butler did his thing in that movie. I liked him as Texan Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, I've liked the little things I've seen him in, but I really like this kid in this movie. He came through big time. He he was menacing. He was creepy. He had a look to him. I was very much into what he was giving us on the screen. And I think he has a big future in acting, and I appreciate that. The acting was top notch. It was a great continuation of the story. In three hour movie or almost three hour movies, it pays pretty well. I was not bored at all. I was on the train the whole time until the credits came up. And I, guys, I gotta say, like the action scenes in this, a lot better, a lot bigger. We get some really good fights in here, some good one on ones. We get some really cool scenes with some dope action. You get to see my man selling scars guard being disgusting, playing Vladimir. And oh, he is just so menacing, but he's such a great actor. I I gotta say, this is a fun ride for sci-fi fans. This is one you absolutely need to go see in theaters. Um, but to answer the question though, because I'm gonna keep this brief. To answer the question, is it as good as everyone says it is? I'm actually going to say no, because I think people are talking it up to like, like it's like 2001 or like, like the empire strikes back or like they're talking it up and, and, and who's to say it won't be that, but we got to let the film marinate. I think there's a ton of recency bias going on with this movie, a ton. And I get it. It's the first big movie of the year. Everyone was excited for it. I fully understand. Everyone was just, everyone was craving this. Dune is what we needed. You know, we needed this right now as movie fans, especially with all the Oscar talk going on. We've been talking about all these oscar -y movies. We, we just needed something fun, some, some good escapism. And yes, it is all of that. And yes, it's a great film. But I think we got to pump the brakes just a little bit. I can't say it's one of the best films ever made. I do think it'll go down as one of the best sci-fi films ever made in time. We got to let it marinate a little bit. We got to see it more. We got we to gotta break it down a little bit more. And I think it's going to depend a little bit on how what we get in Dune 3. So 
I think it's pending on its status as GOAT level, but it is great film. Is it as good as the Empire Strikes, B- Strikes Back? Could it stand alone like the Empire Strikes Back can? I can't say whether it can or can at this moment. Because although the Empire Strikes Back leaves you wanting more and leaves leaves you like on the cliff, I can just watch that movie by itself and just roll. This movie, I'm not sure yet. I'm very, I'm like, God, I need to see what's happening next. I just want the next one. I want it right now. But guys, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm going to wrap this up. So overall, I'm going to give Dune 2 a 9 out of 10. Guys, thank you so much for watching my Dune 2 review. Let me know if there's a film or topic you want me to review down in the comments. I got a podcast with my buddy, The Cutting Room Floor. I'll link that down below for more movie content. Hit me on Letterbox. I think I'm going to do a Letterbox video soon. So hit me on Letterbox, Ralph Vader. I'll link that below as well. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It helps me out. I appreciate it. I will be back next week. And don't forget the popcorn.